quality 14. What do you mean when you say personal truth must be faced before divine truth can be found? Yes, um, probably the best way to say that would be personal error must be faced before divine truth can be found. Yeah. Because most of the time, the thing that present, prevents us from receiving divine truth into our soul is the error in, that we're in on particular subjects, whatever those subjects are. Now, what, what I mean by that is that we need to understand that our soul is exercising, while it retains the error, it is exercising its will to resist God's truth. Mm. And unless we are willing to face our personal error, what, it, what we believe is true inside of ourselves, that's actually error. And remember, it's an emotional experience, so we have to face it and experience it emotionally, yep. unless we're willing to do that. We will not be able to find God's truth on that particular subject. So this is basically how we use our will. Mm -hmm. We need to learn how to use our will to allow ourselves to face all of the things about ourselves inside of ourselves. Yeah. Now, remember that this personal truth, or we could call it personal error, mm -hmm. depending on what type it is, um, exists as emotions, desires, passions, longings. It exists as intentions within the soul. It doesn't exist as an intellectual concept. Yeah. It exists inside of our soul. That's the thing that's preventing us from receiving more of God's truth. Mm. So we have to face what's really inside of our soul, not what we want to be inside of our soul <laughs> or what we'd prefer to see inside of our soul or what we hope is inside of our soul or what we hope everybody else thinks is inside of our soul or any of those things. Instead, what we need to do is face what is really inside of our soul. Mm -hmm. What is really there? What is really there as our intentions? What, our, what are our real intentions? Not what we hope to think our intentions would be or what we hope that everybody else believes our intentions are, but what they actually are. And what about the condition of love that's inside of my soul? Not what we hope it to be, not what we hope everybody else thinks it is, but what it actually is. That's what it means to face the personal truth and error. Mm -hmm. And we must, this quality, quality 14, basically is saying we must face this truth and error inside of our soul before we can receive God's truth about any particular subject inside of our soul. Until then, we're just hearing the words. So, mm -hmm. so this has been the problem for many people coming along to our seminars is they come along to the seminars and they hear the words. And I speak a long time, as everybody <laughs> knows by now. And so they hear a lot of words. Yep. and some of which they retain. But very little is retained because there is very little openness in the soul to examine the personal truth or the personal error that's within the soul from an emotional perspective. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like the truth is presented and it goes in one ear and, as the saying goes, out the other. <laughs> it doesn't get stored anywhere very frequently because there's all these emotions of error inside, intentions and beliefs of error inside the soul that have yet to be experienced emotionally, that have to be experienced emotionally before the truth can enter. Yeah. And, and we've got to learn to face this personal truth. Now what I see a lot of people doing is they have a huge desire to know God's truth on a certain subject. And at the same time, they have no desire whatsoever to understand their personal error on the same subject. Now, this is not very conducive to receiving God's truth mm -hmm. because unless you understand and feel and experience your personal error on that subject, you will not ever really know God's truth on that subject. Yeah. It's impossible, in fact, to know God's truth on a subject while your personal truth is still with inside of you dictating what the outcome is going to be. And it is an act of will, your, the use of your soul's will to change that. At some point, you've got to be willing to examine yourself completely honestly, completely truthfully, with no holes barred. You've got to be willing to go through that process. 
the majority of people who hear divine truth are not willing to go through that process for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they have all sorts of judgment about the process. They want to live a happy life. They think they can manage a happy life without releasing error, which is not actually true. So there, there's a lot of beliefs that are in the soul of the individual generally that prevents divine truth from entering them, no matter how much you speak it. Mm. So this is why I've spoken divine truth with, to, of divine truth for some people for five years and during that period of time, none of it has entered them. And that's because they have not been willing for it to enter them. Mm. There has been emotions inside of their soul that they're unwilling to experience that prevent them from experiencing or receiving the divine truth inside of their soul. And because the divine truth hasn't been received in their soul, nothing can change. Yeah. And if nothing can change, then it means they become the same person they were five years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And then they go, this doesn't work. Well, of course it doesn't work if you use your will to block the process. Yeah. <laughs> it's never going to work that way, yeah. ever. Yeah. I used to think or used to say that um, I felt this is such a beautiful system that actually as God engages with us, as a very loving parent, he's, he's desiring for us to know ourselves and, to, and in order to know ourselves, we have to face ourselves. And, and I suppose in all honesty, I used to feel that that's a beautiful thing. God loves us so much that he doesn't just want us to, to know him. Or to make or out to, we know him. <laughs> yeah, but he actually wants us in that process of coming to know him to actually find the beauty inside of ourselves and, and really heal ourselves. Yes. Now, living that, really, yeah. um, in all honesty, I find it very confronting to face some of the things that are actually inside of me, yeah. the, the emotions of error that are inside of me. And, yes, um, and, and they must be faced if we're going to receive more divine love and we're going to receive more divine truth. That's yes. the, this, the, this quality is basically saying we must face these things we don't want to face. Yeah. In order to receive more love and truth, we must face them. And we must choose to do it from our heart, not from our head. We can't force it. We can't force the process. We have to go through the process as engaged from the longings of our soul to do it. Mm. So it has to be an emotional experience that we engage fully with awareness at the emotional level. And again, intellectually, I can see how beautiful a design that is. Yes. I can see the beauty in that design that God is actually asking us to develop our will in yeah. this very sincere way yeah. as we come to know him. Because it means we really change. Yeah. It means that we really grow. It means it's not all fake. It's not all just a facade. It's not all just learning something that we're not really interested in. We have to be interested in it to learn it. Yeah. That's the beauty of all of God's truths is you must be interested in it with a passion to learn it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is a quality of the soul that says that if you're not with your passion interested in one of God's truths, you will not receive it. Mm. In fact, it's impossible for you to receive God's truths when you have no real interest in receiving them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. So from your notes here, um, you say, if our personal emotion is in opposition to divine truth, then we cannot feel divine love completely. That's correct. So, so if we think of our personal emotions, remember our emotions, our intentions, our beliefs, our passions and desires, these are all what are a part of the soul. These determine the will of the soul. Mm. So, so when we use the term will or long for God's love, using your will to long for God's love, we're basically saying that we have to use our passions, our desires, our beliefs, our motivations, our intentions to in harmony with that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. We're going to have to bring all of these things into harmony in order to have uh, an expression of our will where we long for something. Yeah. Now, when we truly long for something, we will receive it. Most people forget that. They go, oh, I'd like to receive some love from God. No, I'm not really feeling anything. God mustn't want to give <laughs> no, you don't want to receive it yet. Yeah. You've got a block inside of your soul emotionally that prevents you from receiving it yet. Find the block. What is the block? One of the blocks could be just apathy, mm. uh, that you don't think it's going to be worth anything to you in the end. That can be a block. Yeah. 
there's, there's all sorts of blocks. Another block could be feeling that it's not possible, that it's impossible. Another block could be disillusionment, you know. Mm. These mm. are all blockages that we need to allow ourselves to feel before they'll release and therefore allow, after they've been released, allow the truth to enter. Yeah. You listed um, quite a few examples here. Should we go through Yes, them? I feel yep. so. Yeah. So if I believe myself to be worthless and unlovable. Yes. So, so a, lot, a lot of people say to me, um, I've longed for God's love, uh, but I don't receive any. And I go, okay. Um, are you sure you long for God's love? Oh, yes, I long for God's love. Do you believe yourself to be worthless and unlovable? They go, yeah, I do. Well, if you believe that, how can you say you long for God's love? The f real feeling coming out of your soul is I'm worthless and unlovable. And uh, yeah, right. So and that's you... that's the prayer. That's the statement going out to God. I'm worthless and unlovable. So what's that really saying to God? Don't bother loving me. I'm worthless and unlovable. Unlo and unlovable. Mm. And is, is, this is where you're saying that that personal emotion is actually in opposition to divine truth. It is in opposition to divine truth. From God's perspective, you are lovable and you're worth everything. <laughs> you're worth more more important. You're more important to God than any other physical thing God's created other than other people's human souls. Mm -hmm. That's how important you are to God. So you're worth more than the sun, you're worth more than the earth, you're more, more than any other thing in creation, according to God, other than any other person. Mm -hmm. so, so while you're believing you're worthless and unlovable, you've now got an opposition emotion. Your emotion is an opposition to God's emotion. Now you're going to need, the only way you can get rid of an emotion that's in opposition to God's emotion is to feel the emotion. So you're going to have to feel why you feel worthless and unlovable. You're going to have to feel the pain of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once you feel the pain of that emotion, now when you have a longing for God's love, you're going, I'm worth something and I am potentially lovable. Would you be able to give me some love? And of course some love can flow into you in that place because you're now open to receiving it. Because you're in harmony with divine truth on that issue. Because you're in harmony with divine truth on the issue, but also because you now have an opening in your heart that's saying, I am worth something and I am worth being loved and I desire that love. Whereas before you were saying, I'm not worth anything, I'm not worth to be loved, I don't really want love. That's what your soul was really saying. And at some point, your soul has to change what it's saying. It's not your intellect, remember, that prays to God. It's your soul. So, so you've got to be willing to change the feeling inside of your soul. And if the feeling inside of your soul is, I'm worthless and unlovable, you cannot receive God's love in that place because it's in complete disharmony with truth from God's perspective. From God's perspective, you are worth everything and you're worth being loved. And until you're willing to give up I'm worthless and unlovable by feeling it, you will not receive the truth from God that you're worthy and lovable. Mm -hmm. right, so that's an example of yeah. how your personal truth or your personal error has to be faced before God's truth can be found. Mm -hmm. Okay, another example. Mm -hmm. If I believe I'm better than other people. Okay, here I'm saying, my soul is saying, Let's say in my soul there's a feeling in me, an arrogant sort of feeling of superiority. I'm better than you. I know more than you. I'm better. You know, I'm more worth some. I'm worth more than, you know, to God than you are. I'm worth more to other people than you are. You know that kind of a feeling. Well, that feeling is in direct disharmony with God's truth on the subject, because God's truth is you're worth the same as every other one of God's children, not more. The same. That's God's truth. Mm -hmm. While you have inside of your soul this arrogant superior feeling saying that you're worth more, you will not receive God's love. Mm -hmm. You cannot receive God's love and you cannot receive God's truth in that place on that subject. God's truth is you're equal. That's God's truth. And you're not going to receive that. You're, not, you're going to walk around with this sort of arrogant feeling of condescension and disapproval, superiority to other, over other people. You're going to walk around with that. Everyone around you is going to feel it. Every, and, and God knows that you're out of harmony with God's laws. You're not going to receive God's love in that place. You might get, receive some nice pandering feelings from spirits or something like that. 
who are not very good in their condition, but you're not going to receive God's love because you're directly, your soul is using its will to remain directly out of harmony with the truth. Now, how do I get rid of that? Only by feeling my own arrogance, feeling my own superiority, feeling how, where it came from, what, what got it there, why do I believe I'm so important, more important than everyone else. A lot of times it means that we were treated with a certain degree of favouritism when we were a child or something over other children and things like that. And so we grew up to believe that we are better mm -hmm. as a result. Or our intellect might be more clever than somebody else's and so we believe we're better because of that. Or, you know, we have a certain scientific bent and we believe that's better than other people or whatever it is that it causes us to remain in this arrogant condition. Whatever it is needs to be felt and released yeah. because if it's not felt and released, this personal truth isn't felt and released, God's truth cannot enter you. God's truth, which is you're equal to the other person, won't enter you. Mm. 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 Okay, next one. If I believe that I can keep breaking God's laws without penalty. Yes. I see a lot of people longing for, thinking that they're longing for God's love, not receiving any, anything, and then thinking that it's all God's fault, <laughs> basically, <laughs> that they're doing nothing wrong. Well, no, the fact that you're not receiving God's love when you think you're asking for it means you're either not asking for it in the way that God designed or it means that you are already breaking God's laws of which you're conscious of and you have no intention to change, mm. right? And, and I see a lot of people in that state having no intention. You can speak to them like till you're blue in the face about the particular subject they face and they have no intention of changing it and therefore they, their soul's will is being used to not face its own personal truth, it's not, not face its own personal condition. And in that moment, what's happening is they are blocking the reception of God's truth, they're blocking the reception of God's love as well. And that can continue for, th I've seen it continue for thousands of years. Some of my friends from the first century are still in the hells because of that one particular problem. Yeah. Because they, they believe that they you know, should be able to get away with breaking God's laws and, and also receive God's love and improve and be in a nicer space, in a nicer condition, in a nicer location in the spirit world. It doesn't work that way. None of God's laws allow it to work that way, in fact, which is great, actually. It is a good thing, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? It yeah. is a very good thing. And, and yet the majority of people on earth believe they should be able to manipulate law so you, so you get the average person who gets caught for speeding, they want to get away, you know, find a way out of it. The average person wants to, wants to manipulate their way out of something happening. You can't manipulate any of God's laws. Once you've broken the law, the penalty is automatically imposed. Bang, bang. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't go to God and say, look, oh, I'm sorry, can you just let me get away with that? I'll do better next time. None of that. None of that will work with God. Yeah. And most people on earth think, it, think that it will. And they think that it will because they've been brought up with that. You know, they got away with things with their parents when they were little. They got away with things in society as they were growing up. So they now think that they should be able to get away with things depending on what they believe is right or wrong. Yeah. You can't stay in that state and receive God's truth. Mm. It's impossible. I, uh, I've heard recently quite a few people that we know saying, well, yeah, I've got that issue, but hey, I'm in a pretty good, good space emotionally or I'm no worse than anyone else here. And that's really a way of just avoiding um, the laws that they are consciously breaking, isn't it? Yeah, and I feel quite sad for a person who says that I'm no worse than anyone else here. Because basically what they're saying is everyone else here is in the hills because that's basically the general condition of the Earth's population mm. and I'm no worse. Well, that's, I, don't, I don't think that's a fantastic thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> to be, yeah, to me, I wouldn't be bragging about that. I'd be saying, yeah, I'm no worse. That means I'm, I'm not, not in a lower hell than everyone else. <laughs> but you're still in the hills. Yeah. Like, what, what's the point of that when you could be you know, acting in harmony with love? 
And those kind of comments come from people who have who are using their soul's will to have no desire whatsoever to grow in love. Mm. They just want their current addictions met and they have no desire to grow in love, otherwise they wouldn't say those particular things. A person who truly wants to grow in love never says those things, in fact. Mm. Okay, here's here's another example, perhaps Mm. a little bit more confronting. A person suffering child abuse who refuses to work through the issue emotionally. Yes, so this is, a, this is one of the difficulties of, of that, that a lot of people on the earth face, right, being abused as a child, either violently or sexually. The problem with such abuse is this, that we grow up trying to stay away from it emotionally. We grow up trying to disconnect from it emotionally. Now, the only problem with that is our soul is using its will to disconnect from its own emotions. Now, if God's truth can only be experienced emotionally, it will be impossible for the emotional experience of God's truth to enter that soul while that person is denying its own emotional experience. Mm -hmm. In order to grow towards God, this person who's been abused will need to choose to feel its emotional experience of what happened in its past. Now that can be quite a difficult process to go through, but essential, because if it doesn't do it, it's going to be in denial of its own emotion and therefore in denial of any new emotional experience. And the soul isn't built, as I've discussed in the How the Soul Functions series of questions and answers, the soul isn't built to selectively choose one emotion over the other. If you choose to shut down a large portion of your life and a person who's choosing to shut down from abuse generally is shutting down their entire sexual life and their entire life with regard to fear, that's a huge area, they are huge areas of shutdown and we cannot expect to continually receive God's love while we remain in that condition. We're going to have to open to those emotions. Now, while a person may want some help doing that or want to go to a therapist to get some help to do that, they can still do it all with God by themselves, but they'll need to be willing to go through the process. So this, the process of feeling our emotions is independent of who caused them, whether we caused them through our own choices or whether somebody else caused them. If we choose using our will to shut down the emotional experience, we are not going to face our personal truth. And if we don't face our personal truth, God's truth cannot enter us. God's love also cannot enter us under those conditions. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's often quite confronting for people, isn't it? You see a lot of people holding on to things from the past because they feel, I didn't do it, why should I have to go through it? And when you think about it, that is really an angry statement. It is a state of anger going, I didn't do it to myself, so I shouldn't now have to go through it, is really being angry with the person who did do it. And it's really being angry with God or anything externally. So so you're going to have to own and feel those emotions. When you start feeling those emotions, you'll start receiving some love. Mm. That's the reality, because God's truth can enter you. You get to the point where you realise that, ah, I realise all of a sudden that Without my feeling of my emotions, no one else can do it for me. No one else can actually feel my emotions for me. No one else can have my experience. And once you realise that, you realise that all of the emotions that are stored within you, whether they came from your own poor choices in your life or from somebody else abusing you or harming you, all of those emotions are now in you and only you have the power to release them. Nobody else can do that for you. And in fact, that now gives you the power to change. If, if it was dependent upon other people, then it might be even dependent upon the person who abused you, which, mean, would, which would mean that you'd have to wait until they change before you change, and that wouldn't be very fair. No. The way God's made this system is that you must change for God's love to enter you. Mm -hmm. For somebody else to have God's love enter them, they must change. (laughs) And God's made this system very wisely so that allows you to get total control over your own personal life. 
So that's a very good thing. Actually. It is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and something that I think not many people think of. Not at all, because when you're in a state of anger and you feel like you want to blame other people, you often don't think about this, the other side of the issue from God's perspective, and that is the truth that God created everything perfectly so that you, between you and God, can have a relationship and you need no one else. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Yeah. You don't need a priest. You don't need the abuser to repent. You don't need anybody who's harmed you to repent. You just need to go through your own process of forgiveness and repentance with God. Mm. That's all. Okay, a couple of other points that I think you've sort of covered. Um, we cannot avoid the feelings of personal truth and at the same time receive divine truth. Yes, so that's fairly obvious. If while I'm trying to avoid my personal truth and remembering that my personal truth is emotional, desires, passions, intentions, mm -hmm. belief systems, everything that's inside of me, and while I'm avoiding the reality of it, yeah. avoiding being honest about what's there, God's truth can't enter me because God is honest about what's there. So, so while I'm avoiding honesty about what's inside of me, I am in direct opposition to God's truth entering me. Yeah. Right? I'm using my soul's will to block the reception of divine truth. Mm. It's really so simple, isn't it? And yes. Yet, and as you've mentioned previously, simple for a child to do, to be honest. Yes. And yet we create all of these blocks towards such a simple process, don't we? Yes, it's simple, but as an adult who's learned over many, many years to deny the truth about themselves in particular, learned over many years to shut down their emotions, learned over many years to deny love, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of blockages to the process as an adult, which although it's a simple process, it becomes a hard process, not easy, because of all of these blockages. So we're going to need to work our way emotionally through all of these emotional blockages, all the anger that we have about doing it, and then all the fear we have, and then eventually the grief will flow out of us. And once that really happens, then the rece receiving process is very, very easy. Mm, mm. Okay, final one you had here. Feelings that oppose love and truth must be released by experiencing them before God's truth can enter us as a feeling and experience. Exactly. So, so this is just an extension of what we've been saying. Feelings of love and truth that are out of harmony with love and truth are the blockages. So just again, feelings that are out of harmony with love and truth are the, are the blockages, blockages yep. to receiving God's truth and receiving God's love. Right? So the only way that I can let go of these feelings that are out of harmony with truth and love in, that exist inside of me is to feel them. Now, it doesn't make them true. It just means that I have to feel the error that's being created that now exists within my soul. Mm. Once I feel this error, now the error leaves me and the wall that blocks me from receiving truth has now been deconstructed. So now there is no wall and truth can flow easily as soon as I long for it. If I have a sincere longing for it, the truth and God's love will flow. But I need a sincere longing for it still. So I need to let go of the error and to do that I'm going to have to sincere desire to do it. Mm -hmm. I'll have to let go of the error and then I'll have to choose to long for the love and truth from God before the truth can enter me. Yeah. And that is me facing my personal truth so that I can then receive more truth from God. And that means me letting go of all the things that are error inside of me that prevent me from receiving this truth from God. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Great. Good.